I have another stove review for you. This one is a DIY project and there's very little to do to turn this into a stove and that is a food colander. If you're interested in seeing how this food colander works as a hobo stove, keep watching. So if you've been following my YouTube channel for any length of no time, you'll know that I started out by making a lot of things DIY at home. And one of the things that I'm fairly well known for right now is my IKEA hobo stove made from an IKEA utensil strainer. But I have a few other stoves made from common kitchen items as well, such as the vegetable steamer and a great big colander pot that I use to make a supersized hobo stove. And I have been using these food colanders like this one for some time and I haven't really uh, thought to share them with you because I, I wasn't so sure that you would be interested in them. But I had a viewer recently comment that um, I'm showing some very expensive stoves uh, in some of my review videos of late and the common man or the common person may not be able to afford them. And uh, yes, I, I, I recognize just how fortunate I've, I have been. I have a few companies who are sending me stoves now to test. A lot of them I still purchase myself because I, I do have that interest. But some of them are, can be quite expensive, especially the titanium versions. And people want to get out into the woods without spending a lot of money. Maybe eventually they'll, they'll save up some money and buy one of those more expensive stoves. But in the meantime, they just want to get out and enjoy themselves and they want to have options on things they can use. So I dug my uh, colander out and I thought I'd bring it out today and make it a whole theme of things that are DIY and on the low cost, low budget items to cook my lunch in today. So what is it about these things that make them so good as stoves? Well, look at the ventilation all the way around, including the bottom. These things are just begged to be used as a stove. And you can see I've used this a good number of times. And uh, they're, they're extremely effective. Now, they're not without uh, some, of, some a few things you have to consider. I'll share with you in a minute. But what I like about them, this is probably, I would say, on the smaller size. Some of them come quite a bit larger, you know, big enough to fill your sink in. Some of them come very small as well. So I picked them up at the thrift store here, but I do see them on the IKEA website, and they're in the dollar store stores. So it's not as if you have to spend a whole lot of money. This likely cost me between 99 cents and $1.99 at our local thrift store. And like I said, I have been using it for a while without any modifications to it whatsoever. Um, yeah, they just work well. So what I thought I would do is take this down to the fourth floor here and I'd set it up. We'll get a fire going in it and I'm going to heat some water up for some lunch. But as I do, I'll talk about some of the pros and cons of using one of these stove, one of these colanders as a stove. Okay, as you can see, I have the colander set up on the ground here. Uh, I did say that this was a budget-themed cook set completely, the, the whole thing. So let me share what else makes up this cook set. Now this is something I did purchase at full retail. This is, when I say full retail, $4 for two of them. This is one of those uh, barbecue mats that you can buy. These ones come from the dollar store. I think the brand is Brady Crocker of all things. And you can lay them on your barbecue, grill right on top of them. They're a non-stick surface. And they're working really well for what I'm doing here, laying it on the ground. Now, I have no concerns this time of year in November with wet earth, I'm, I'm right next to a swamp. I have no concerns about heat going into the ground and causing a forest fire. But the other thing this does is protect the stove from drawing moisture up into the wood. So it just makes it uh, a little bit more efficient. So I just wanted to point that out. The stove, I did say, another budget item. This has appeared in other videos. I have a whole video on making and using these. This grill is the top of a barbecue basket, also from the dollar store. You just take the lid off of the barbecue basket and you've got a grill. Now, as a grill, it's also going to be my pot stand for this stove. We'll talk about, talk about some alternatives to this in a few minutes' time. Uh, the pot that I'm using, I picked up at the thrift store. It's just, I don't know what brand. There's no brand or any writing on it at all. But it's a 13-centimeter stainless steel pot that you can see I've used a good number of times. I actually have a video on this with another cook set. Some water inside. Even the spoon that I'll be using came from uh, the dollar store. So yeah, there's my setup. Now, I just said that the woods were wet and they are, I'm, like I said, right next to a swamp. So I have, actually I'm sure I have way too much in here. So I'll pull a little bit out. This is going to cause quite a bit of smoke and flame when I first get going. 
all the trees here, well, except for the birch that I'm using, all the fuel that I'll be using will be straight up spruce, because that's what I'm in. I'm in a black spruce swamp. Sticks bend rather than snap, but they will go with a little bit of heat and help from the birch bark. They will ignite. They're going to be smoky, of course. And I have another bundle here, slightly larger, so once that starts to catch on, I'll drop this next bundle in. Airflow is not a problem in this stove. Plenty of airflow. There we go. Get that going inside. Again, that's going to be smoky and flames are going to reach high for a few minutes. All right, I have some larger dead spruce branches here. I can start adding them on now. If you look at this, even though this is a small size colander, it's still bigger than the firebox, the Bushcraft Essentials Bush Box XL. There's a lot of capacity to this stove. I don't think I need much more for this demonstration there. There's a lot of capacity even in this small colander. And as I mentioned, there are smaller as well as larger versions of this. Now, one of the things that should be immediately obvious to you is that this is wider at the top than it is at the bottom. And that potentially makes this unstable in that if you don't balance correctly, you could tip this one way or the other. Now the bottom does flare out so that there is some support at the bottom, but even so, it could be potentially somewhat unstable. What could you do about that? Well, I think there's probably a number of things you could do. The easiest for me around here is just to grab a couple rocks and put them on either side. Now, I've already had a couple fires in this so far today. I really don't need to do that. I've noticed it's quite stable on this piece of earth, but I could put a, even a couple of logs, whatever you want to support the sides of it. Uh, yeah, okay, now, looks like the wood's starting to go down the side. I'll put my grill on put my pot on. You can see it as a 13 centimeter pot, there is lots of room all the way around, lots of airflow all the way around, and you could put a much larger pot on. Of course, be careful not to choke off airflow. Now, alternative pot supports. I like this grill because it acts as a grill, of course. I can grill with, right, with meat right on it or sausages are right on it over some coals. Or I can use it to support the pot like I'm doing now on top of this stove. Alternatively, most of these colanders have holes rather than slots. This one is just a little bit different in design. It has slots rather than holes. The ones with the holes, you could run skewers through to create pot stands of different heights to go with it. I do have a little alcohol stove I wanted to show you. I, I failed to put it inside, but uh, I'll show you how well it works in a moment that goes with this. Um, another alternative, I guess, would be to suspend a pot with a bale with a small tripod. I could have created a small tripod and hung, not this pot, of course, but many of the other pots that I own. I've done that with the uh, one of the other DIY stoves, the, the uh, vegetable steamer. It works well as a stove, as you are aware if you watch my videos. And quite often I suspend a pot over that, a pot with a bale. Let me grab the little alcohol stove. I won't be able to set it up inside of this to demonstrate how well it works because I forgot to do before I started. But I may be able to take a picture of it and uh, clip that in here to the video. So this is a fancy feast stove that I made from small rip pull top tuna cans. A lot of people use fancy feast, which is a cat food, of course, but I wasn't buying cat food and tossing the can or tossing it away. I just used the tuna can. It has a fiberglass wick. I went to the hardware store, picked up uh, a length of fiberglass that's used for wrapping around tailpipes or anything hot. And uh, yeah, so there is my DIY alcohol stove. And what's nice about this style of stove, of course, it supports the pot. It doesn't require a pot stand. It's integrated right into the style of the stove. If I had been smart enough to show you before I built the fire, this will sit down inside of my colander and that pot will sit on top of this. And what happens is, is you have a windscreen for the stove. So that works out very well that way. Okay. Uh, Simple demonstration for a very simple stove. That's all I wanted to show you. One last thing, I guess. This is a repurposed one of those uh, energy drinks, the uh, highly caffeinated, I don't know what they're called, that energy drinks. Uh, two ounce bottles, great for storing alcohol and very stable, very watertight and everything. Okay, that's all I really needed to show you to show you how well this stove works. Let's wrap this video up. 
All right, simple video, hopefully relatively short video, how to use a food colander, food strainer as a wood stove in the woods. You know what's nice about this is there's even less work to make this functional than there was with the IKEA utensil strainer. Um, really, I didn't have to do anything, just purchase it, take it to the woods. Now, a couple thoughts on these. As I mentioned when we first started, these come in a variety of sizes. This is probably on the smaller size, but for me, I don't think I'd want to carry anything larger than this when I'm out in the woods. So this is a good size for me. Now, um, one comment you might make is, well, that's a bit too bulky for me to carry in my backpack. And I can uh, see how it could be, but a couple thoughts here. First time I started carrying this out, uh, I just strapped it to the outside of my backpack and uh, I didn't worry about it there and I didn't have a stuff sack for it. I've since had made stuff sacks for this and yes it is a bit bulky but that pot that I had has a stuff sack of its own because it's dirty and it would get my pack dirty if it didn't but it has room inside for my fire kit, for my coffee, my coffee makers, just about everything and then that whole pot in its stuff sack will go inside of this, inside of its stuff sack. So that's just compacted everything down tremendously. Now it's not a nesting kit, it's not a perfect fit, but it does things that makes things a lot more compact and still just a reasonable size and a very, very reasonable weight. I didn't add the weight of this one. I could put it in the show notes or I will put it in the video uh, description below if you're interested, mostly because uh, it really depends on the one you buy. This one is stainless steel, most of them are, some of them I see are enameled on the outside. Your choice, pick one up, give it a try. What, 99 cents to two or three dollars at the most. And that's second hand, brand new. I can't imagine they're much more than that. But they make an effective stove. It does have that top wide, I wouldn't call it top heavy, but the potential to be tippy if you don't put something under either side. Looking at the handles, I could probably drive stakes down through either side or metal tent pegs that would help secure it to the ground. They'd have to be fairly long, of course, to do that. But uh, yeah, okay, I think what I'll do is I'll leave it at that and just get some thoughts from you. What are your thoughts on using a colander like this as a wood stove? Is it something you would try? Maybe you're doing it already. Do you have any suggestions for modifications that you would do to this to make it even more functional? Uh, if you have, please put them in the comments section below. If you have any other thoughts on this as a wood stove or any other comments you want to make in general, please put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.